Hello students of Mathematical Studies. Hope you're feeling fantastic. Making this video on a Friday afternoon and it's a beautiful day outside. I should be out there running around screaming, but I'm doing this instead for you because uh, this isn't easy and we've got some work to do for Monday or Tuesday. We're supposed to try these problems. We did two of them in class and maybe going back and looking at the class video is a bit rough, so I'm going to try to do a shorter version here to help you through this. So hopefully you can see on the board here we've got a triangle. We've got a triangle area formula. I'm not using base times height, and the reason why is I find that carrying an H around is silly. Um, when you got a right triangle, you got an A and a B. Those are your legs. So one half of their product is going to be your area. But A can also stand for altitude. So every triangle can have a you know, height. So um, that's one triangle area formula. The other one we're going to be using on this lesson is the uh, semi-perimeter times the in radius. So that also works. And we derived that one a while back. Well, here we're going to apply that to a right triangle. So this is a different problem from the ones that you're working on. This one has a perimeter of 132 units and an area of, I hope it says 330, that's 330, and we're setting out to find the side lengths. What a cruel thing to do to somebody, but lo and behold, here it is, the task at hand. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's sketch it out first and come up with this in radius thing because we can solve that straight away. So here's our right triangle from what generically done. There's an attempt at drawing a circle inside of it. I don't think I did a great job on that, but you can go ahead and praise me if you like. Anyway, the in radius here is, um, is going to form a square and two kites, okay? And each of those kites is going to have an area that is identical to an area of a rectangle. So that's an important concept to get there, and you can go back and look at some other stuff or ask questions like, why does it actually work out that way? I'd be happy to answer those, but we're just solving this problem right now. So all those concepts that should be understood, if you're weak on those, Send me a message, ask about it, say, why does that kite have the same area as a rectangle? And I can show you a little thing on that. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and take that as being the facts. So, if we call this little piece X, and that's R, and that's R, and that's Y, it's true for a bunch of reasons that X is also up here, and Y is also right here. Okay, so that's just breaking down our triangle into some parts. What's helpful here about that? sorry if I've been in the way of the triangle, is that um, x plus y happens to be the hypotenuse in this problem. So once we find out what x plus y is, we've got one part of our problem already solved. All right. As far as finding the in radius goes, we know that our perimeter is 132, so half of that is going to be our, um, our semi-perimeter, which is 66. So in order to find r, we have to divide our area by 66. Because it's true, the area is semi-perimeter times r, 330 is 66 times r, so R is 330 divided by 66. At this point, I don't feel, I feel like putting 66 into 330. I'm going to notice there's a common factor of 3 sitting around here. Um, and then we'll notice a 2 in a little bit, too. But uh, that gives us 110 over 22. Uh, so that's kind of fun. Uh, maybe I'll get rid of that 0 for that 110 up there. Uh, now we got a common factor of 11 sitting around also. So let's get rid of the 11. There's 10 of those. And there's two of those. And now we have 10 over 2. Oh, that's just 5. Okay. So maybe you could have done 330 divided by 66 a little bit quicker. Um, but our in radius is 5. Okay. So now we are actually going to go to our, um, our, well, what are we going to do here? Ah, yes. That, uh, the semi-perimeter is x plus y plus r. Because what we see right here is we've got x and x again, y and y again, r and r again. So 2 times x plus y plus r is the whole perimeter. So x plus y plus r is the semi-perimeter, which we know is 66. Take away that 5 that we just found, and we're down to 61. Okay? So x plus y plus r is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, x plus y is equal to 61. That already equals our hypotenuse, you know, so that equals C in our ABC question, okay? Um, it also means that uh, Y is equal to 61 minus X. And that's where we can have some fun with this 330, which I'm going to double because one half leg times leg uh, equals the area. So leg times leg is twice the area. So just to, uh, distribute that one half. So here we go. Um, that 660 happens to be 
x plus 5, because it's x plus r there, times, all right, so uh, now we've got, hmm, times y plus 5, which is 61 minus x plus 5, which is 66 minus x. So make sure you understand where this came from. That was a little bit quick. Um, to do that work right there. The 66 is going to be kind of important. Now here we got this 5 and the 66 happening again. Those are going to multiply to a 330. All right? And you can go ahead and FOIL this whole thing yourself if you like. I'm going to write it out here what the result is. Okay? We're going to get a negative x squared. We're going to have a total of um, 61 of these because we're going to have negative x times 5 and 66 times positive x. So we're going to wind up with that 61 in there. And then we're going to have the um, positive 330. When we subtract this 660 from both sides, we're going to get a negative 330. But that's going to be with the negative x squared. And I don't want to work with the type 2 quadratic. I want to work with the type 1 quadratic. So I'm going to multiply everything through by negative 1. And so do this on your own. Pause and do this on your own and then see if you get this result. Okay, so you're paused. Hey, now you're back from having paused. Great. And so you're like, wait, dude, where's your result? Well, it's right here. That should be your quadratic. x squared plus 61, x plus 330 equals 0. Now, this is a factorable type 1 quadratic. So there are factors of 330 that will add up to 61. And we're going to find them, and we're going to find them this way. So we're going to do a little setup here. And we know that we have two subtraction problems happening here. We know we have a type 1 quadratic, so the x's have no coefficient on them. Right? And we're looking for these two values here. So a technique you can use here, we can break this down. We've already kind of broken this 330 down for some other work. But we can break this down into some pieces, and I'm just going to use this little space right over here. And I'll use it right over here for this one. So I might wind up off camera for a while. I'm still handsome. You'll be okay. So there's the 61. That 330, we're going to break down to 2 times 10, 10 times, times 3 cool. times That 11. part was so, off the screen. No, sorry, 2 times so 5. So here we go. We got That's the 660 so and the 61. Two, we're going to break three, down. 3, 5, 11. Hello, I'm back. Um, 2, 3, 5, and 11. Is that actually correct? 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 11 is 33. 10 times 33 and is so 30. Look, those are all prime numbers. So now we're looking at ways to combine these prime numbers to get a sum of 61. And so uh, let's see what we got going on here. 61. We could do 55 and 6. Oh, that was easy. That just happened. It's 55 and 6. So there we go. 6. And 55, okay? So x is either 6 or 55. Let's go back to our thing now in our problem. That means that um, c is 61. So I'm just going to write out what these are. a, b, c is equal to something, something, 61. Because we know that c is 61, okay? The other something is the short leg. And that's going to be 6 plus 5, okay? Oh, sorry about the... Um, well, what's going on here? X is 6, right? Yeah, that's 6. That's 5. 6 and 5. Well, that's 11. All right? And then the other one is this 55 that's here. And we have a 5 right here. And 55 plus 5 is 60. And this is an interesting one because you can see that this Pythagorean triple happens to be uh, one of the type where it starts with an odd number. And the C and the uh, B are one away from each other. And when B and C are one away from each other, you might recall that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but it's also true that A squared equals B plus C. And 11 times 11 is 121. And that's what you get when you add those two legs together. So feel free to watch this again. As a way to do this, we're working with factorable quadratics that we're finding uh, out of this information about um, perimeters and, uh, and areas of right triangles using the in-radius formula. Thank you.